Hey guys, I'm Chad Barnier, personal brand expert, host of the Personal Brand Podcast and Personal Branding Speaker. And on today's episode of the Online Prosperity Show, we're obviously talking about all things personal branding. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the personal branding expert, Chad. Chad, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing great, brother. I'm super pumped to be here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for making the time. And for viewers, you do understand that every episode we put out there is designed to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And you would understand that personal branding is increasingly important because the modern audience tend to trust people more than corporations. A lot of us go out there when we want to start a business, create a logo, create a website, have stock footage that does not even um, say who we are or represent us in such a way that our clients can have any trust with us. So personal branding allows you to actually establish a reputation and an identity while you're still maintaining a personal level of, first of all, trust, interaction, and this is usually through your social media um, you know, interactions with your clients because clients really want to do business with those they know, like, and trust. And for them to trust you, you got to be one of them or present yourself in such a way that you have trust signals. Now, I could go on and on about this, but that's the reason why we brought in the expert, Chad, to tell us a little bit more of why this is important more than ever to actually have a personal brand going on for you within your business. Now, Chad, tell us a little bit about your background and why you think mm -hmm. personal branding is very important, especially these days in, in our modern business. Yeah, awesome. Well, hey, look, my background is actually pretty varied. I, I, was, I wasn't always in the personal branding game. Uh, believe it or not, I actually had a background in music. I played guitar and piano and sang uh, in a pop band, and I traveled all around the world doing that. And, um, and I, I learned a few really great lessons about hustle and about creative storytelling and about influence and, and, and connection with people that, uh, that after I kind of felt like I had wrapped up all the things I wanted to do in my band and ticked off a bu bunch of things on the bucket list, uh, I decided to start a business and I got into photography and uh, graphic design and web design. And uh, I found that I kept dealing with, uh, with particular clients and it wasn't necessarily business or brand it, it was people it was people who said i am an identity i am i want to have a connection with people and hopefully monetize it at the same time and uh, it wasn't until i had some clients approach me and say hey why don't you offer it this way and talk about it in terms of personal branding and an identity design for people uh that it, i really started to lean into it then and it just kind of took off from there Absolutely. I mean, obviously, as a musician, you have to pick your crowd. You have to have a certain genre of music that you play in order for you to stand out from the myriad of, um, you know, other singers out there. Mm. So, you know, personal branding is really, really important. And especially on the, um, you know, um, you know, on the business front, you just don't want to be a one click wonder. So when people just notice you once and, you know, they never know who you were or distinguish you from from the myriad of messages mm -hmm. that are coming through their you know their devices right now now mm -hmm. when you approach or tackle the subject of personal branding what mm -hmm. exactly are we looking at are we looking at having the same hairstyle are we looking at wearing the same clothes are we looking at if you've got the one frame of glasses don't change it like Heston <laughs> what what mm -hmm. exactly because that's where people misconstrue yeah. or go wrong when it actually comes to them looking at that and they just put it in the too hard basket and eventually it gets ignored. Yeah, totally. I mean, the, the, the whole idea around the, I, I wear green glasses every day or maybe I, I have yellow socks and, and ties or something, but that idea is a tactic that you can choose to, to use as a part of personal branding. It's a very minute part of it. Essentially, all that that is trying to communicate is a level of consistency and a level of familiarity. So if someone was to see it for the second time, they go, ah, I remember that guy. And then hopefully it's a shortcut to, I remember what he said last time. I remember how she made me feel last time. But really, 
personal branding is just an amplification of who you are and your most authentic self. And I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of friction when people start thinking about personal branding and, and having to be on all the time and, and present themselves in the world because a lot of the time people aren't actually being their authentic self. So it looks like work because they need to work to get themselves back to their authentic self in the first place. But once you're there, it couldn't be further from work. I mean, for me, yeah, I wear a hat and glasses and, and a jacket all the time. There are reasons behind those things and I've worked them into my brand. But before I was doing personal branding and thought about it from a strategy or tactic level, I was wearing this stuff anyway. And so I just made it kind of a part of the story. Right. Okay. So we, we're not, we are way advanced, you know, than what dogs or other animals have. <laughs> As you would know, dogs sniff each other and then they understand, oh, that's Sally from three doors down. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and, and then they actually know their, their authenticity and they can tell whether that person is a good dog or not a good dog. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is, that, is that exactly where you are leading with now by s creating that sense that people can smell you through the, the, their phone screen or something like that? Yeah, and I think it's an interesting thing you touched on is good or bad because those things are really just uh, paradigms that we, we've created ourselves. Is like, I think this is good and I think this is bad. Someone else might think the exact opposite thing, but you want to appeal to a particular person's good or a particular person's bad. If someone, so that's where we talk about target uh, audience or target market, all that kind of stuff. So for me, I want to appeal to creative impact driven entrepreneurs who are a little bit different and want to shake things up. If I was to rock up and I was wearing like the three piece suit, there'd be a cognitive dissonance between what they want out of something out of an experience with someone and what I'm turning up to be. Absolutely. So then that segues into what you mentioned a bit earlier on about authenticity. Mm. Please walk us through that <laughs> word. It is yet another word that's just like, yeah. okay, so I can't scream. I can't yell. I can't, um, you know, <laughs> speak profanity just because I want to appear as if I'm an authentic, uh, you know, business person. Mm. Yeah. And look, authentic has become a bit of a buzzword, which is really fascinating. Um, really authentic just means stop, just cut the crap. Like just, just stop trying to be anything other than yourself. When it becomes, it, it's hard to turn that into strategy or people think it's hard to turn that into strategy and business and how to actually use it to turn the wheels of a business, right? Because you go, well, if I'm just me, who wants that? It, I think it's a little bit of a self doubt thing that people are, don't believe that they are enough and they are worth it. Uh, or they see other people being certain things that works for them. They see Gary Vaynerchuk swear, or they see this person say this kind of things. So they have to say that as well. Um, it really authentic is just be yourself. I mean, there are definite things because of how buzzy it's become that like swearing, swearing seems to be the shortcut to authentic. So you see people out there just dropping F-bombs all over Instagram because it means, oh, this guy's real. He's a real guy. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the case. It's like you, you, in 2018, people's bullshit radars are so finely tuned that it's, you got to strip it back and just be real. Otherwise, people can smell it a mile off. Absolutely. You need to know that everything that you do, both intentionally or not, you know, it actually contributes to the way others are perceiving your personal brand. So most of the stuff that we actually think um, people are looking at, they're actually looking at reading between the lines. So yeah. Yeah, you're That's absolutely it. right. I, I wrote a blog post a couple of months ago called your personal brand doesn't get a day off. And a few people were a bit uh, uncomfortable with that. Be, like I was saying before, but they're currently not feeling authentic in themselves. Personally, like not getting a day off just means like, it's almost freeing of, hey, it's okay to be you all the time. The people who respond to that will respond to that positively. And some people might not like it, but you shouldn't try and make everybody like you because it's, just, it's not possible. <laughs> Absolutely. If you try and impress everybody else, you know, you actually end up impressing nobody. All mm -hmm. right. So just bringing it back to a bit of business, I know we could jam <laughs> and play <laughs> guitars and have a, a jolly good time while talking about personal branding. Uh, people are in business to make a bit of coin. People are yeah. in business to, um, you know, help 
um, whatever charity they think of, whatever their why is. Um, mm. And there's a lot of sales that is involved in order for transactions to happen either online yeah. or offline. Um, how does personal branding actually then work in terms of me just having uh, maybe ads out there or automating things? Mm. Um, where then do I then need to be always on brand? Yeah, cool. I mean, where, where branding, personal branding turns into money, it's really fascinating. And, and people have always connected more with people than they have, like with faces than they have with logos. Like you t said before, people need to know, like, and trust you. It's a lot easier to trust someone sitting in front of you, talking your language, vibing with you than it is to go, okay, there's a big business in a scary building. Do you want me to buy from them? <laughs> right? So, I mean, I, I probably too willingly uh, part with my money when, when, when I can see someone that I go, Hey, I like their values. I like what they're about. There are some definite uh, strategic things on how to position yourself and how to use that to monetize. I actually interviewed Jack Delosa, the founder and CEO of The Entourage on my podcast, and he had a really great way of how he looks at his business, The Entourage, and him. And so he says um, that Jack Delosa, the brand, is the provocateur, the, the question asker. He, he pokes and prods and, and challenges his audience and then he uses the entourage to answer those questions and provide solutions. So Jack Delosa goes, hey, have you ever thought about this? Is that challenging you? Are you having trouble with that? And kind of uh, creates a bit of uh, urgency in people. Uh, and then the entourage pops up and say, hey, we can solve all those problems if you want, which I thought was a really cool way to, to, to put that. Absolutely. Um, that that um, is pretty profound. And in as much as if you do... Um, you know, listen or find out what he, he's doing. He's now proving the fact that every person online can actually become their own media company, you know, mm. and by yeah. putting out content there, you know, you do a podcast yourself and um, all the social networks that you're, you're prevalent on. Um, is that then one thing that then maybe stops people dead in their tracks because we've known what a media personality is like. We think of Oprah, we think of Ellen DeGeneres, we think of, um, who else? Uh, Steve Harvey, every one of mm. those big larger than life personas, you know what I mean? Yeah. And how then is Jenny from the block <laughs> going to <laughs> yeah. be able to cut through the noise and still be heard while people are scrolling through and still watching Saturday Night Live or Coochie's business builders, um, you know, on there. Yeah, look, I, I, I'll answer this in two parts, right? So I've broken personal branding down essentially into two main pillars. The first one being personal branding and the second one being thought leadership. A personal brand isn't a, a, an, the same word. It's not a synonym for celebrity, right? Personal brand really it's about knowing who you are, what you have to offer and what makes you unique, knowing who your marketplace is, knowing how to com communicate who you are in your marketplace and then meeting them there on a, on a particular platform. So you could be the accountant down the road, the dog walker down the street, and have an awesome personal brand and have a little community that just loves you, right? That's a personal brand. It doesn't matter if, if you're on TV. The next part of that is thought leadership. It's, it's taking what you've got here, packaging it up, pouring some gasoline on it and lighting it on fire. And then that's, that's the stuff that, that's, that you see on TV and radio and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so, but you can't have, like I wouldn't suggest, <laughs> and it's kind of hard to be an overnight success, right? Because you haven't done the foundational stuff to take and amplify. You haven't done the, who am I? Who's my audience? What's my message kind of stuff. So, um, and uh, I was going to answer it in two parts. So it was that part. <laughs> and, um, uh, ah, damn it, I forgot the second part. I'll come back to it when I remember it. Absolutely. No, you did well because the reason why I actually brought this, this question mm -hmm. up is some people really just, you know, leave that to, like you say, the mm -hmm. celebrity beat, but who you are, what your values are, what you known mm -hmm. for, what you actually do for others. How do you actually help people by actually helping them? Why yeah. would they purchase from you instead of buying from Sally down the road? That then yeah. constitutes, um, you know, the, the personal brand. If I've yeah. understood. And um, if you're watching this right now, if you've got any questions, please type in something over there. And I'm thinking, Chad, 
would obviously be, um, you know, able to answer them um, mm -hmm. in order for you to actually get more value from <clears throat> what it is that we're putting out there. And thank you so much, uh, Chad, for that. So, That's cool. Chad, now that when I was growing up, you know, you only knew Nike, Apple, mm -hmm. and um, who else is another brand? Kodak. They yeah. now left the the Charles <laughs> Nike and Apple, yeah. you know what I mean, and uh, yeah, they you would know what they represented, you would know what they did. There's now yeah. so much noise because every person with a laptop, a pair of um, sweatpants, and a vest can actually be an entrepreneur today, mm. and yeah. they can go on and create, you know, their, um, you know, their their. Um, their personal brand what sort mm. of tools or what sort of platforms would you think is easier for somebody to actually mm. use to to build their brand so that they skim through the noise and actually reach that audience that you're talking about uh, you know that needs the kind of service or product and has the pain that you know they can solve as that uh, personal brand themselves yeah awesome i mean look Obviously, one of the biggest answers to this is social media. We live in a pretty incredible age where that's just, you can't deny the power of Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, all that kind of stuff. But the best tool that you can, that you can use to develop your personal brand is between your ears. It, it's your brain and, and it's, it's taking a step back and before you jump on Facebook, before you jump on Instagram and throw your hands up and say it's not working, is, is take a step back and really think about why and who, like, so who am I? What do I have to offer? Why, why do I even want to be on Instagram? Why do I want to be on Facebook? Like, am I selling a service? If I'm selling a service and I go on Facebook and I'm posting photos of my dinner, that doesn't, that, that there's no uh, strategic step to, here's my dinner, buy my book. <laughs> They're all the, so you need to think about what, what you're doing and why you want to be on the platform in the first place. So before you start thinking about platforms and stuff is, yeah, Think about who you are, who, what your values are, what you represent. I mean, it's funny that you said stuff about Coca-Cola and Apple and, and who they are. And Ellen DeGeneres, actually, you said before, is a great example. Is, is you can see it ooze out in everything she is. Like, she's a comedian, right? And so is Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais type of humor is poke fun at people, and, and, and quite rudely so. Ellen DeGeneres doesn't make jokes where someone is the butt of the joke which is really like a small insignificant thing when you think about it, but it's a, it actually has a profound effect of she is always, always, always building people up. She never goes through any interview or anything where she makes someone else feel less than at the end of the interview. And so just something like that, just out of her comedy, you go, wow, this person, like I see their value uh, or their values. And, and so when, when you think of your values and pull it onto a social media platform, you want that same result that any interaction that you have, people go, oh, I see that. I see who you are, what you're trying to accomplish. Now I know I can trust you. Absolutely. I think that was a very, very good answer. And you took <laughs> me on a journey there. I was thinking, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're watching this and you're really, really liking this, just um, you know, give Chad a couple of thumbs up so that he understands that what he's actually saying is valid right there. Now, obviously... I read somewhere that no matter wherever you are, there you are. So that means your brand is being created, um, you know, where you are. It doesn't mean you have to show up and, mm. and be on brand or, you know, somebody's going to knock on your house's door and be like, two minutes. And then <laughs> well, I, I got a funny story about that last yeah. week. I mean, so I run a podcast as well right. and, um, and usually it's online just like this. And the other day I had a guest who didn't read the fine print and rocked up at my house <laughs> to do the interview. I was like, Oh, okay, cool. I guess I'm going to be ready in two minutes. So yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer that you never get a day off. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right. There's also one other thing. There's, um, you know, we're the most documented generation ever. And yeah. um, I've seen a lot of people, especially I'm coming in from um, yet another country. So I'm going to have descendants that are going to want to find out their origins. And it starts with me. So a simple Google check would just be like, oh, yeah, he was. He was a douche. He was lazy. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> And that, that's so oh, lazy. <laughs> All right. So, would, would um, is it is it possible that my brand is actually even being written right now without me being actively involved in it? So, you know, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, personal branding, um, as, as much as it, as it is aesthetic and appearance and presentation, it's also reputation management. I mean, so it's, it's almost pre reputation, but before someone has something to say about you, you kind of writing that story. So it's easier for them to tell it. So if, if you just leave it up for other people to tell your story, sometimes not, might not be told the way you want it to be. And you can't always control that. I mean, I'm a big, uh, big musical theater fan and my favorite, one of my favorite musicals is Hamilton. And, uh, and you have, and one of the lyrics is you have no control, uh, who tells your story. Like you, you can't, but you can influence that for sure. So you can influence and with your behavior, with your actions, with your, your, your giving of value, whatever that it might be of, uh, of someone's, um, idea of you and your reputation absolutely that this has been profound now if people really want to learn a little bit more about branding and everything else that comes along with it especially the personal branding side how can people get hold of you chat yeah cool look the two best ways is i mean obviously these guys listening right now are big fans of this kind of content so the personal brand podcast is all over itunes overcast and stitcher you can check that there you just look up personal brand. It's the first one that comes up. Uh, or actually, I have a Facebook group, which is uh, really kicking and, and people are loving. I share similar content. So that's called the Personal Brand Fam, as in family. And, uh, and you can join us over there and hang out with us. Absolutely. So it's 2018 right now. The last time I checked, we're in the second uh, week of the second month. If mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, there's still... 10 more months to go. A lot of things have been changing, especially on the Facebook front. Um, yeah. There's no longer reach within the news feed. Um, a lot of people are crying foul, but those that <laughs> have had personal brand, people are seeking them out. You know what I mean? Mm. What then can you advise, um, you know, people that, um, you know, maybe struggling, studying out, uh, mm. you know, how to then proceed. Um, you know, sometimes it might just feel like, Oh, I built on Snapchat and Facebook, robbed everything to do with Snapchat. Now I built on Facebook. Facebook has taken off the pages. Yeah. What, what sort of advice can you give to people that are um, on a building phase? Um, yeah. Look, I, I think anytime a social media platform changes their algorithm, everyone kind of throws their hands up in the air and says, wait, what about me? And it, I, th I personally think that's a, the wrong reaction. Then they're not going to change it back just because we all get a bit angsty about it. So it's an opportunity to look at what Facebook is actually trying to accomplish or what Instagram is actually trying to accomplish. And what they've said is they just want real connections. They're sick of brands being able to buy their way into people's heads. They're sick of fake news, all this kind of stuff. They want Facebook to be a platform for people to connect with people. And really the best way to do that is to tell stories. So it's actually a really good thing for the little guy, big brands. It takes them a long time to get strategy through all the different levels of, of corporate and meetings, all that kind of stuff. So I would recommend for anyone starting out is lean into the idea of live video, tell awesome, interesting, engaging stories. You want to educate, entertain, and get into the Facebook group kind of stuff that like where you have control of that audience. Absolutely. When we started the show, you did tell me that you're leaning into um, a value or the word impact. Mm. We just close off the show with that. How is that going to be affected by me actively working on my personal brand? Yeah, cool. I'm a big believer that you can't help other people without helping yourself first. I, I think that you can give more of yourself and, and, and feel or increase your capacity. So in the idea of personal branding, you're figuring out ways to push your capacity further out so you can give more of yourself to people. And so a lot of the people I work with are impact driven. They want to, they want to help uh, in, in many different ways, different communities, different types of people, different demographics. They want to have an influence over other people's lives and really help them out. And so I, I find that it's, it's a really selfless thing to, to want to do is to, do, to build you so you can build others. And a lot of people think it, it looks selfish. You're building you, like do more for other people. It's like, I'll get there. I really will help them, but when I can give them my absolute best. Absolutely. Well, if you're flying anywhere else, the air hostess would tell you to put your mask on first before you help anybody else. So if you're not yeah. doing that for other people, then 
what good are you? All right. So thank you so much, Chad, for your time um, on the show today. I believe this is probably going to be easily one of the best episodes we've put out there. Um, and um, it's Say that to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, man. I, I had a great time. You're, you're a total legend and yeah, this is a good chat. Absolutely. Bye for now. <laughs>